with it three games three decisive results <laughs> and this time you won you are leading now in the match did you expect it to be so bloody um, this entire match i did not i did not actually um, also i did not expect that today i'll win uh, in so quickly so it's a very pleasant surprise take us through the game first of all you started with knight f3 today uh, and then it transposed into the english symmetrical english and then he played queen b6 knight b3 i think it was a relatively not so explored line right so this queen b6 is played to avoid um, some forced lines for example when you play e6 um that is the main move then for example g3 g3 queen queen b6, b6. and now knight d b5 when like there are crazy, crazy lines there so he probably queen b6 is a move to avoid those things and maksudu had played this against me in prag masters and there i reacted with e3 i got slightly better position but it was not so much this knight b3 e6 a3 is supposed to be the reason why queen b6 is not so good ah you knew it yes after the game i had checked back then and i thought this was good although i did not remember all the details um in the game um So the first critical point was I think after he played this d5 bishop e3 queen d8 takes everything knight d5 e d g3 do, do bishop e7 think... now bishop g2 I think is inaccurate ah. which might seems like such a natural move it's in fact I feel inaccurate I should play queen d2 bishop f6 rook d1 and then I can go with bishop g2 stuff so everything is protected and then I get my play against the isolini so when you played bishop g2 you were okay with bishop e6 because then it's like you castle yes. castle knight d4 takes bd4 and that's a risk free edge yes. maybe that was what you thought yeah i mean i thought of, of bishop f6 ah you thought uh, but i underestimated how strong it would be because um, initially i thought okay i can just play knight d4 but then he has castle castle bishop g4 rook e8 like lot of counter play on this e2 pawn and i cannot hold the bind then i wanted to play castle myself after bishop f6 yes. Why didn't bishop you do B2, that? Rook A two. No, I wanted to play Rook B one. I thought. Ah. Rook A two is better. Yeah. Yeah. Rook A two, Bishop F six, Rook D two, and it's like huge edge. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I misevaluated this position. Because then he, if he castles Rook D five, ah sorry, yeah, uh, yeah first Rook D five, and I think uh, Queen does not have a good square to go to mm-hmm. somehow. Rook A two can he play D four? I was thinking about this. Ah maybe. But maybe you move the bishop. So D. Bishop D two, bishop C three. Ah. So it's a question like after rook A two, what happens? Um, right. For D four, but that is one thing, and also I underestimated bishop six, rook D two. I was only thinking like to take on D five. Ah, got it. Then he has this bishop H three ideas everywhere. So I misevaluated this. Apparently, rook a two is a good move. Yeah, I wanted to play rook b one. Now rook one b five is very good. Bishop takes a three, knight c five, and I thought I have very good uh, play. But then he has this castle move, and after knight b seven, queen e seven, my knight is trapped on b seven. Oh, um, and he is like surviving. So I did not see how to continue, and then that's why I thought for thirty one minutes, which was ridiculous. Then I played this queen d five. And I think it should be equal. Mm. Like bishop d2 was fine. Rook a2, bishop c3, bishop d2. Now he could just take on d5 and take on d2. I thought this was. But maybe small good. edge, you know, for you. Or? Small edge, but I did not really see how to continue. Like queen d5, bishop d5, bishop d2. Let's say king d2. Then he has this very strong move, knight e7. Because the point is, if I move the bishop, he goes bishop e6 and untangles. Ah. Uh-huh. And if I take with the rook. Then he goes king e seven, and then rook d eight is coming. So this bishop f six was a bit of a surprise. Hmm. He went back, and then I have again slight edge, very easy position. Uh, of course, he could have resisted better, uh, but uh, yeah, I think he just underestimated this knight on e six. When you played uh, knight a six, did you see the beauty of that position? Because it's like c eight cannot move because b seven hangs, rook cannot move. It's like a complete bind there. Yeah, I was like very tempted when I saw this knight e6. Initially, I wanted knight e4. Mm. Uh, when I which is, I think, maybe slightly better according to the engines. Maybe, but yeah. Bishop e7. Yeah, but bishop e4, bishop d7, and he gets bishop c6 next move. I did not see 
what really I'm doing here. Mm. Um, so I thought ninety six was clever. Uh, engine spoiled all the fun. Yeah. But engine also gives it as an advantage to you. Ninety so six, uh, I knew that I'm better. Um, actually, I did not see clearly how he can uh, untangle. Uh, apparently, after rook d two, he should take on d two and then go knight d four. Mm. But he played directly knight d four. But uh, when he played knight d four, did you instantly see that this is a mistake? So, I was thinking of this knight d four all the time. So uh, instead of rook d two, I also thought of e three uh, to stop knight d four. But here there is very pretty move knight g five. The point is, if I go now knight c seven, he has bishop g four. Rook d one is back rank mate. So I thought f four I can play after knight g five, but he has bishop e six. Oh. Gets out with the tempo. I get an exchange, but he consolidates. So e three does not work, and then I wanted castle, but then he has knight d four, knight c seven, rook b eight, knight d five. Now bishop e six, knight f six, g six, bishop comes to c four, and okay, slightly better, but not so clear. So then I thought rook d two is very clever. Uh, apparently now only ways to take on d two first, king d two, and then knight d four. Then I get knight c seven, knight d five, but he doesn't lose this piece. It's slightly better, and in fact, from afar, I wanted to play like how he played in the game. I wanted to play bishop five castle. Uh, then I bring the rook. It's also very very good, but rook d4 just wins. Did he w- miss it? I mean, what happened? I think he he told me after the game that he underestimated knight a6 idea. Like ah. he saw it, but he didn't. But he missed he rook missed. d4, knight e7, and take on f5. I This, mean, of course that yeah, yeah. he missed for sure, but uh, the evaluation earlier was uh, he it, he went into this unpleasant position. You know, uh, ever since the world championship match. Went up and down. This match is sort of uh, mimicking it. So far, <laughs> so I hope the time stops and I keep the lead. Um, right. I feel like some games I'm playing good. Yesterday also I played decent, uh, but I did not defend so well. W- would you say yesterday's game, the way you lost in some way, is similar to what he did today? Because yesterday you had like an equalizing line. Today he might he also had somewhere equalizing, but he went. And yeah, maybe you got ambitious. And maybe collapsed yesterday very easily in the end game. So yeah, it can be considered similar. Right. And how difficult is it to make a comeback in matches? We all know in tournaments when you lose, you but you are facing a new opponent. What happens in matches according to you? Is it also tough to like today when you sat again opposite him? You know that blows have been traded. I don't know. I have very limited experience in matches, so for me maybe this question at the end of the yeah, match yeah, will be so, better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just three games, and I'm learning on in the process. Well, with it, good luck and uh, congratulations on this victory. Thank you.